Hey guys, that's right, D here is back with a brand new episode of Table Cheese with Anton Six and myself. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, and follow, and guess what? Enjoy the show. What's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of Table Cheese. I'm your host for this week, Anton Six. Joining me as always, we have nobody. I'm doing another one-man show, the second time this month. Um, I'm doing this one for Table Cheese. Uh, you could look up Cheesy Controller Podcast, Anton's 15 Minutes of Fame, if you want to see how the first draft of this kind of content went. Um, but now I'm doing one for Table Cheese, which I've been D and I have been trying to get together for weeks to get some table cheese content created and so he reached out to me yesterday as of recording and asked me if I could do a one-man show and so trying to get better with content like this I agreed to do it he sent me a couple stories he wanted me to talk about and to get my perspective on and I got a couple stories that I found interesting just over the past week that I felt like I could talk about so the first one from D, and of course, this is a D story. Batman Arkham Trilogy for Nintendo Switch delayed. Uh, this is coming from IGN. Wesley Yeenpool was the author. Uh, Batman Arkham Trilogy for Nintendo Switch is delayed. Publisher Warner Brothers Games has announced. It was due out October 13th, but will now launch December 1st, 2023. And there's more... Their quotes from Warner Brothers Games Twitter, but I feel like there's a simple explanation of why this game was delayed. It is because anybody who recalls the original launch of Batman Arkham Knight will remember that that game had a lot of performance issues across PC, across console. I think the PC launch is like notoriously bad, but I could be misremembering that that might have been Arkham Asylum that had a really bad PC part port I'm not sure cuz I'm not the Batman guy I've actually only played a bit of Arkham City as far as the Arkham games go I'm really excited for Spider-Man 2 coming later this month that's my most anticipated game of right now uh and I've played Marvel Spider-Man, Marvel Spider-Man, and Miles Morales, and I'm ready for Spider-Man 2, so. 19 Inches of Venom. Just had to drop that in there. Um, but the reason, I remember when this was initially announced, a lot of the commentary is like, it's going to be interesting to see how Warner Brothers pulls off running Batman Arkham Knight natively on Switch, because that was a game that I don't think the PlayStation version really saw any optimization until it got a PS4 Pro patch, which allowed it to use a lot more horsepower to kind of brute force its way through problems. But for that to be a PS4 Pro era like improvement, the Switch has nowhere near the horsepower that a PS4 Pro has, much less a PS5. So... Yeah, I'm sure it'll be interesting because, I mean, Arkham Asylum and Arkham City were PS3, Xbox 360 games. The Switch should have no problem running those games whatsoever, but I just know that even high-end PCs around the time of launch had problems. If Arkham Knight's the game that I'm remembering, because, of course, I could just be misremembering the launch of Arkham Knight, like, I was actually interested in checking that one out, but I think the performance is what drove me away. Because in the early-ish PS4 era, I tried to stay current with pretty much everything AAA because it was way easier than it is now. Like, over the course of three years, we'd get as many good games as we've gotten just this calendar year. So, um, that was the story D wanted me to talk about. So, but anybody looking forward to it? You know, try and play it somewhere else. I'm sure these games are available streaming in some form or fashion. Maybe through NVIDIA, maybe through Xbox. 
and those it'll be running on more powerful hardware and just streaming to you the switch is kind of just continuing on its like crusade to just pretty much have every single video game before a certain era like the amount of collections the borderlands collections the bioshock collections like getting batman in there i mean if it's for you it's for you and you know it uh you'll just have to wait a little bit longer two months a little bit less than two months okay so now on to uh less positive well i mean a delay is negative but i mean i'm all in favor of people delaying games to make the improvements that they need to make before releasing the product because the finished release product is going to be the lasting reputation of that game and the longer you delay it the more time you have to better optimize it so on to this more negative story boomerang x developer the name of the studio is dang with an exclamation mark is shutting down they said they say quote we are out of money Boomerang, this is from George Yang at IGN. I have three IGN tabs and a PlayStation blog tab up for just for people following along, even though nobody can see my screen but me. You can maybe see the reflection of my eyes. Um, Boomerang X developer Dang has announced the studio is closing its doors due, due to being unable to secure funding for its next game. Dang is closing up shop. Unfortunately, we are not able to find funding for our next game, and we are out of money, the studio said in a statement written in the desktop notepad app. We are not writing off the possibility of working on some small stuff together in the future, but for now, all we're going... We are all going our separate ways. Thanks to all the love you've shown us over the years, and thanks for playing Boomerang X. And... I mean, the games industry is, I'm about to just get real deep and philosophical because this is, this is kind of more on the positive end of a lot of these stories where it just seems like they're going their separate ways and it seems like a positive, you know, end to the story. It seemed like a logical end point for the studio, but... 2023 has been a year of amazing games as well as incredible layoffs across the industry. It's all of these major publishers hired up, staffed up, and then bought a lot of other studios making redundancies within the company. A lot like Embracer Group purchased up just such a large share of the industry on their own that now that they were unable to close their deal with the Saudi Savvy Games Group, um, these, like, I can just Google video game layoffs. Sorry, I'm not the world's fastest typer, but of course... A second in recording time feels like an eternity. All right, so let's just look at in the news stories in the past week. Oh, the gamer actually consolidated it into one list. So Epic Games has had layoffs. Bioware has had layoffs. Embracer Group has had layoffs. I know that... Activision Blizzard had layoffs. Uh, Why can't I just find... This just seems like an op-ed on, like, the effects of all of this consolidation. Oh, this is more of a commentary on all of their layoffs. Naughty Dog had layoffs. Uh, Let's see. I mean... We're at the point that I'm looking at Yahoo Finances just finding these new stories. Uh, Worms Company, Team 17, they had layoffs. Like, just the list 
of studios and publishers and everything everywhere across the board in the game space seems like it's having layoffs and it seems like all of these things grew too quickly and it was just in an unsustainable sense and i remember during tgs there was an interview where capcom was saying that in reality its games are worth more than the the asking price that they the msrp of their games and i feel like because when games jumped to seventy dollars there was a huge conversation about inflation at the time and when we adjusted inflation of from 2013 to 2020 that number already exceeded the amount of that ten dollar price increase in new AAA games and i mean we're going to see capcom is going to release supposedly monster hunter world 2 supposedly next year fingers crossed let's hope you know for a game awards announcement at this point because tgs is gone summer games fest is gone all these opportunities for capcom to just drop the ball and have millions of people hand over their money they just haven't taken that opportunity but yeah so for games yeah, for Boomerang X, it's unfortunate that this team will not be able to fund their next project and continue developing games, but it could be a lot worse because, like, we talked on Cheesy Controller Podcast, Epic Games laid off something like 6% of its workforce. So, I promise, we're, well, I'm going to get to the less... Both these stories are more positive than the first two stories, but this first one's going to be about Blizzard, and for anybody who doesn't know, Blizzard is a horrible company that should atone for their crimes. Like, literal crimes. So, you can look it up. D and I have even talked about it around Diablo 4. So, Diablo 4 is coming to Steam. Um, It's set... The launch date is set four months after the PC version released exclusively on Battle.net. It's coming to Steam October 17th, so that's not too far off. Um, It's following behind Overwatch 2, which I know was the first time, at least in the modern era, that a Blizzard game was released on Steam. So that's, I mean, that's a big step. I know a lot of people just hate having these additional launches just i don't necessarily mind them but i don't do a lot of gaming on my pc so a lot of times games coming to steam just means it'll be now accessible to me on my steam deck because i'm sure diablo i know for a fact that people got diablo 4 running through battle.net on a steam deck it just seemed like a process that was like 70 steps too long for me Whereas this, it'd just be a matter of, oh, Diablo 4 is on sale? I'll get a copy of Diablo 4, download on my Steam Deck, pick up and play. But I probably won't be doing that because Blizzard's a horrible company and I don't want to f- support them monetarily in any way. I did download Overwatch 2 when it came to Steam on my Steam Deck, opened it, let all the achievements pop, closed it, deleted it, haven't thought about it since. Like... Today's probably the first time I thought about that since that day I did that. Um, but yeah, this is just an opportunity for people globally who I know Steam has a bigger market share in foreign markets. Like in the U.S. Is, has the biggest market share as far as like a PC games marketplace. But I know other places like when Overwatch 2 came out, on Steam, it became Steam's worst ever reviewed game, uh, user reviewed game, and that was because of Blizzard essentially getting into an argument with, uh, I want to say the CEO of Tencent. It might have been NetEase, but whoever Blizzard was partnering with to release their games in China, uh, Bobby Kotick 
which I can't even get started on him. I've already been going longer than I thought I would, so that's a blessing and a curse, you know. Um, but Bobby Kotick basically got Blizzard Games removed from China because he got into an argument with the CEO of, I can't remember if it's Tencent or NetEase, and I know it'd take too long to Google it, so... But a Chinese entity that was publishing Blizzard games in China. So these long-standing games, Hearthstone, Overwatch, Diablo, come on, World of Warcraft. All these games that are meant for people to spend a lot of time and a lot of effort and like form communities around. All these people that had formed communities around these games, like were enjoying these games. All of a sudden, the plug got pulled with no course of getting the game back maybe microsoft when microsoft buys the activision blizzard oh yeah and blizzard is part of the activision blizzard king trio that microsoft is currently trying to buy and i mean microsoft's first party games are all published on steam so diablo like this is just kind of more of their catalog future proofing if they bring steam compatibility to game pass fingers crossed um because that'd be great. That would be... I That'd be the thing to get me to subscribe to Game Pass. It's like, okay, so now Game Pass covers Steam. And if you have Game Pass, you have access to all these Microsoft games. Which would include Bethesda. Which, whatever. Um, and would include Blizzard. Which means by not directly financially supporting the current regime of management. You know, Microsoft tends to be conduct itself slightly better in public settings than Blizzard has in the past decade. And I mean, yeah. Well, it's probably been about five years that they've publicly been looking really bad, but behind closed doors, they've been bad for a very long time. So, now on to an exciting announcement, especially for people like me who have PlayStation Plus Premium. I'll have it until Black Friday. And then I'm probably going to go down to extra, maybe essential. Still deciding. It depends on the prices with the deals. Got to... Whatever makes the most financial sense. But I would not be against going down to essential. Because I pretty much buy my games. So, I don't like... And I'd still get the monthly games. It would just be like some of the older titles that they release. Because... If I were into Sea of Stars, Sea of Stars is the type of game I'd be happy to purchase instead of paying a monthly fee or annual fee that's higher than the cost of that game plus several other games of that scale that I could, like I could get Bomber Cyberpunk, I could get, there's a lot of games that Essential offers that I, or Extra and Premium offer that I already have. And have access to. Like some of them I have physically behind me. My shelf is not set up. You guys hopefully by the next table cheese. Like I got all of my games unboxed. But now I need to get them organized. They're in the relative regions they're going to end up in. I have a new system. Like got like PlayStation column. And then I got like the Xbox column. The Nintendo column. It's this whole thing. Working on it. But it's going to be cool when it's done. And I have a lot more space because I moved my collector's editions and you've probably seen them in the box behind me. Doing this reverse is really hard. That box. Yeah, my collector's editions are all in there and I'm going to probably do something cool with them. But now they're not taking up space on my primary game shelf, which is good and not good that I'm going to have more space (laughs) for physical games. Um, so the good announcement, uh, Sony Pictures Core, formerly known as Bravia Core, launches on PS4 and PS5 consoles. Exclusive benefits including early access to select Sony Picture films. And this ju- it's a high bitrate streaming option with IMAX compatible, like, there are a lot of Sony pictures 
or Sony movies that they don't even sell the 4K Blu-ray of the IMAX version. This would be one of the only ways to watch some of those movies. But one of the interesting things about it is if you're PlayStation Plus Premium or Deluxe, which I found out today, Deluxe is pretty much the same thing as Premium, except it's in markets where they don't have PlayStation Cloud streaming. So Premium includes PS3 cloud streaming deluxe does not and apparently they're the same price but I mean if you don't have the data centers locally to stream these games from then you're probably going to have a bad experience even if they decided hey screw it we're going to let you try and stream these games um but that got me access, like being PlayStation Plus Premium got me access to a curated catalog of up to a hundred movies and went through there. They listed some here that are interesting. So Looper, King's Clay Final Fantasy 15, Elysium, Resident Evil Damnation. So that's four movies, you know, of quality you know certain levels of quality um because i'm not like as a person who has king's glaive on 4k blu-ray i'm not going to sit here and defend king's glaive's quality as a movie if you were into final fantasy especially final fantasy 15 you know give it a watch it was on netflix for a while i don't recommend buying it but you know if you got playstation plus premium you can watch it on the sony pictures core app which is available now on PS4 and PS5. So, but, yeah, I went through the list of 100 movies and there was not a single thing that I wanted to watch whatsoever. But, you know, maybe that catalog will change over time. Maybe I'll still have premium by the time it gets new movies. Maybe there's some hidden gems on there, you know, with these streaming services when you just kind of get gain new access to a random library of content, you know. There are those surprises in there, you know. Every once in a while you get a young love on Max, which I've really been enjoying. Um But yeah, so new streaming app, who this? Ah <sighs> horrible joke um well i feel like this went on longer than my one man cheesy controller episode uh hopefully next time you guys see me um there'll be a new episode of table cheese out you know i there's content in the pipeline it's the table cheese pipeline is strong not like that one pipeline that was cutting through United States. I'm not funny. I don't even know why I'm attempting it at this point. Oh, final news story. Sorry. I I hate it when I'm listening to a show and it sounds like they're outroing and then they have like an actually important one more thing. I wanted to shout out uh, Stardew Valley got a sneak peek on the 1.6 update from Concerned Ape. Um, and of course, Chris from the Cheesy Controller podcast seem super hype about it so it's just kind of a bullet point list of like new things that are coming so the game's getting a new major festival two new mini festivals new late game content which expands on each of the skill areas new items and crafting recipes jaja joja i don't know what that is alternative to some of the end game quests a hundred plus new lines of dialogue, winter outfits for villagers, new types of rewards for completing billboard requests. On PC, it's getting support for eight player multiplayer, and I have it on Steam, so I've been meaning to play some co op of this with Chris. Uh, many small additions and adjustments. There's going to be a new farm type, and there are going to be new secrets and more. So, Stardew Valley, and the fact that this is just another free update, I guess it's the sixth major update, considering it's 1.6, uh, you know, Stardew Valley, it's a gift that keeps on giving, I'm sure, the Switch version and the mobile version and the PlayStation version, all these different versions are going to get this update, but the PC version has up to eight player co-op now, so, you know, 
more room for more fun. But yeah, remember you can follow me around the internet, cheesycontrollerpodcast.com, on Twitter and Twitch. I am at Anton Six Three X's. On Instagram, I am Anton the Number Six with Two X's. Uh, I know. Whatever. Until next time, keep it cheesy and take it easy. Hey guys, D here of FTL Nerd Talk. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Make sure you like, subscribe, follow, tell your friends about FTL Nerd Talk. Got a lot of different shows for all of you. Make sure you tune in every week for a brand new episode. Take it easy.